Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. This video is something I'm pretty excited about. It combines a lot of my favorite topics like Arduinos and using things in ways that they've never been intended to be used and all that kind of stuff. And even if you don't care about laser tag, I really encourage you to watch the video because there's some fun stuff to learn. So let me show you guys what I have. This is a standard push button, momentary contact, that when you push it, tells the Arduino that's located in here to send out an encoded infrared signal. That Arduino is powered by a battery that sits in here. And then the infrared LED is somewhere in here, which goes through a lens here that focuses it. And that's really the magic of the whole system. In fact, this front thing doesn't actually do anything. It's just for looks. There's a lens up in there that is doing most of the magic. So we're going to get another one of these things that I can take apart and grab it. And so the first thing I want to show you is the battery. The battery is your standard cell phone charger and it is just glued in the center of this little one inch PVC cap. In fact, I more made a mold for it so I could physically take the battery out if I wanted to just swap it out. And uh, it's plugged into a mini USB cable that runs up here and around and comes back over here to power the Arduino. So let's take that apart. This is just a prototype circuit, but I'll show you what we've got. Okay, so we take this little electrical cover off and all we have in here is an Arduino Nano that will be upgraded to probably an ESP32 and then just a little breakout board on some perf board here that will uh, takes care of my transistor and resistor and all that kind of stuff and allows me to swap out parts pretty quickly. And then you've got the push button that manages it all. Now, the real magic in this thing, as I said, comes right in this part. So I'm going to be a little careful taking this part. And what you'll see here is that attached to this flexible wire, we have a dowel. And that dowel, you can see where I marked it when I was playing with different things here. But that dowel is coming right down through here and keeping that infrared LED centered here so that it can be the proper distance from this lens. Now, I will be very clear with you guys. I got extremely lucky on these lenses. I've heard people talk about using lenses to boost infrared before and there was just a lot of trial and error and calculations and nobody had a good resource. So I did a little bit of figuring and on my own I kind of came up with these lenses from AliExpress and I will link to the exact lenses that I use. But basically they're made of plastic and they're cheap and this is a brand new one out of the package is very clear and um I think I spent maybe 50 cents each on them. I'll, I'll dig out a link for them. But what's great about these things is that they fit, grab this fitting here, they fit exactly into one of these PVC fittings, into a one inch PVC fitting. So when that lens is flat and it's in there right, you can basically add a piece of PVC pipe right to the end of it and it's going to hold it in place here to where you're going to stay focused. Now, I didn't push that in all the way because I need to take that out. But if you push it all the way in, you can do it without cracking the lens. So the real trick in all this thing, though, is getting it focused. And so let me show you a little bit about what I did to make that happen. So the first thing I did was I got some of this dowel. And I, I bought this from Lowe's, but it's one-inch dowel. And the... The great thing about one inch dowel is that it basically exactly fits inside of a one inch PVC pipe. And so this allowed me to, to basically make something that would, would hold the LED in the exact same spot and focus it. And it's just loose enough, you can see there's a little bit of wiggle there, that you can use something like hot glue or JB Weld and actually get it in there to hold the LED in place. And so what you want to do when you're making something like this, I'll grab the one that's still together your lens is in the center of this thing right here. So what you want to do is you want to cut a piece of dowel that extends past the end of this pipe right here, but does not go past the center of this T connection because you're going to have to slip wires up here through uh, so that you can get them back to the Arduino. 
So what I did is I cut a piece of this dowel and I roughly centered a hole on it as long as it's consistent. In fact, there, there is a reason why it may not be bad to be a tiny bit off center so that when you rotate it, you can, you can focus the lens even more. But basically what I did is I pre-drilled a small hole that was perfect for one of these little LED holders. And what this allows me to do is get repeatable results as I take this thing in and out. And then I used a long drill bit to just go ahead and drill all the way through thing now you can see I'm not centered and last time I did it I used a centering jig on it but I just actually held this by hand and just jammed a drill bit through there I don't recommend that unless you got a really good grip um, but anyway I drilled a hole down the center of the dowel now the reality is if you're building this for real your dowel is going to be about half the size of mine so it's not anywhere near as complicated as, as the one I did but I I made a bigger one for demonstration purposes so what you're going to do is you're going to take not an infrared LED but an actual red LED and you're going to solder some leads onto it. And so in my situation, I just took a red LED, I put it in one of these LED holders and I soldered a black wire and a red wire to it and gave myself some pretty long leads, like way longer than I actually needed. And what you're going to do is you are going to, sh to feed that through here so that your LED holder fits dead center in this thing. So, let me slowly pull this through, pull the red wire a little bit. So right like so. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna keep your LED exactly in the right place. And then it's time to focus it. So I'm gonna move the camera so I can show you what I do for this step. Okay, so I made a way more complicated rig than you need to make, um, but I wanna be able to have all my hands free to show you what I'm talking about. So you can see that I have taken the LED and the red LED is in this dowel and if I point it at the wall focus you can see that it actually is making a giant pattern on the wall you can see I'll move it up and down and there's a little bit of a bright spot in the middle but there's basically no focus at all so if I put the same thing in the lens then as I move it closer I'm gonna move this a little bit as I move it closer you can see that I'm able to shrink the beam down and get it focused. And then what will happen is as I go closer and closer, you'll see that almost like a hurricane, there becomes a really defined circle in the center. And what you want to get it exact, what you want is to have that thing almost be a square in the center and have a really direct beam just dead center and then what you do you take a pen once you get it exactly as you want it now I will say one of the reasons why I said you might want it off center is because you can actually twist this and you'll notice that as I am twisting this thing it's still doing a little bit more focusing so you just keep playing keep playing getting it exactly where you want it something like that and then draw a pencil mark on both the board and the PVC and then that position will be repeatable. Now I do want to show you one other thing. I said originally that adding an extra piece of pipe on the end didn't really do anything, and that's somewhat true. It doesn't actually make your infrared go further, but what it does do is cut out some of the spray. And so let me show you this. I'm gonna hook it up with the extra PVC off. And what you'll see is that with nothing on the end of the barrel, no matter how much you focus it, there's still this halo of LED way around the outside. Now that's where the extra piece of PVC comes in. If I attach that on there, it's still there to some extent, but you're not getting that halo that extends a whole foot or two outside of the actual beam that you're trying to accomplish, especially when I get it focused right. So it, it makes a little bit of a difference, but not an incredible difference. So in my mind, the most obvious use for this technology is turning your neighbor's TV off from a distance. I mean, that's a no-brainer. But beyond that, I think this could be kind of a fun open source laser tag thing that if some people are interested in, I think it'd be kind of fun to make. I have a few more ideas. Um, I obviously want to switch out the Nano for an ESP32, and I think that gives you some really cool possibilities. You could 
basically allow all these things to talk to each other. So you could add games where if one person gets shot, that they automatically become a member of the other team. Or you could do something like an electromagnetic pulse bomb where you throw this grenade and it prevents everybody on the other team from being able to shoot for 10 seconds or all kinds of crazy things like that are possible once you have an ESP32 involved. Now regarding the receiver for something like this, I have some thoughts and I, I think the idea of using somebody else's platform, like this is a generic GoPro case and obviously they're, if it's not fully waterproof, it's water resistant, but the idea of putting your receiver in something like this or attaching it to something like this, I think makes a lot of sense. You could do things like put little LED rings on the inside of here. You'd have to figure out a way to kind of get the sensor out front a little bit more, but you could do some really fun stuff with this. And what I love about it is that there's so many just really cheap accessories. You can get headbands and there's, you know, I don't even know what this is, but this attaches to something else and there's all kinds of clips and they're cheap and they're readily available. And so I think that this is kind of a, a cool way to add little things to your laser tag setup. So while I have the camera set up, I thought I'd give you guys an example of how accurate these things are. And so there's two receivers over there. Both of them are just kind of wide open sitting on top of the Arduino. They're right below those red LEDs that you can see. And um, what's interesting is that they can pick up that IR is coming but they won't fire off unless it's a direct hit. So watch, I'm going to shoot the left one. I'm going to shoot the right one. And then I can switch guns. And I'll shoot the right one. And then I'll shoot the left one. And you'll see that it can tell the difference. So I don't really have any kind of big major vision for a laser tag empire. But I, I do think that we could build some cool things. I think that we could make a, an open source system where somebody could build an entire set out of readily available parts for 30 40 bucks and maybe we could offer some games and things like that and then maybe we could even offer some premium games where we, we just have some advanced logic that could be controlled by a server that you could keep on the property and so i think there's some cool applications for this please talk to me in the comments about anything that just pops in your mind when you look at this stuff and i appreciate you watching